this time, what were you doing the day at the Allied Hotel? I was delivering a message to my friend. Okay, and was your friend in? Were you able to deliver this message? No, I wasn't able to. Okay, and what did you proceed to do uh, after not being able to deliver this message? Um, after I wasn't able to, I explored the hotel a little bit. I went to the TV room, and then from there I went to the movie room. And the movie room was completely dark, and I ended up tripping over a big rock. And I believe that that hotel was liable for my Okay, and what was the uh, the issue at hand is whether Ms. Steinberg was an invitee of the Cadillac Hotel, entitling her to a reasonable safe premises. Uh, Ms. Steinberg, in this case, it is perfectly clear that you enjoyed the status of an invitee when you entered the hotel lobby. The status continued as long as you used the facilities of the hotel reasonably included within the invitation. When, by your own pleasure and convenience, you crossed the bounds of the invitation by entering the TV room and later the movie room, you became, at most, a licensee. While you were in the status, the hotel owed you only the duty to refrain from willfully or wantonly injuring you. The record is very clear that there was no willful or wanton injury. Ruling for the hotel operator is affirmed. Damn, it feels good to be a gangster. Mr. Ward, on the day in question, was the pool feeder working? No, it was not. What did you do? I did my job. I had to put the soda ash in the pool, so I uh, dumped a bucket of it in. Now, Mr. Ward, will you please explain to the court what happened on the day in question? Uh, yeah, so after I dumped it in the pool, I turned around and did something, I can't remember. And um, when I turned back around, there was this guy that was in the pool, he wasn't there anymore. Uh, there was a guest that came by, uh, Mr. Jones, I think his name was. And um, yeah, I asked him if he saw him in the pool, he said, yeah, he was in there a second ago. So, you know, we just thought he was in there, so we jumped in to look for him. Mr. Wolf, did you have any training or were there any life-saving devices to be utilized? No, I don't, I don't have the hook thing. There's not even a chair there. I can't even swim. I, I just, I don't know, the guy was in the bottom of the pool. What happened next, Mr. Wolf? Um, we were walking in the pool. I couldn't see my feet, couldn't see him. It was real dark. Um, we got like right over top of him. We found him and then uh, I started pulling him out of the pool. Other guy jumped out of the pool to go find a lifeguard. I don't know where she was, but we went to find him and that's it. Pulled him out of the pool. Yeah, it took a little bit of time, but they eventually got there. It was like, I don't know, like 20 minutes. I had to go to lunch. Did the paramedics arrive on scene? Yeah, they eventually got there. It took a little bit of time. The lifeguard was, I don't know, beating on his chest or something, trying to get him to, trying to get him to breathe or whatever. It took like maybe 20 minutes for them to get there. And what did the paramedics conclude? Um, he was gone. Dr. Poole, is there anything you'd like to add? Well, um, in my expert opinion, uh, soda ash is not just dumped into a pool by the bucket. Uh, and in, fa in fact, uh, a full bucket of soda ash is roughly 10 to 12 times more than is needed or required to filter the pool. What would the pool ash cause? Um, it can in basically cause an excess of turbidity, which is in layman's terms, uh, an excess of uh, muddiness, like thickness, darkness. It basically makes the water uh, very cloudy and you can't really see through it. Okay, I understand. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, well, I also noticed several violations to state laws, um, such as regarding the lack of pool safety equipment uh, around the property of the pool, as well as the lack of training to the staff as well. Uh, thus violating several state laws, in my opinion. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Bull. Thank you. We find that all of the HRS rules, which are the Florida Department of Health and Rehabilitative Services, at issue obligate the hotel to protect a class of persons, guests using the pool, from a particular type of harm, drowning. All of the rules were designed to ensure a clear view of swimmers in distress and or the capability of saving them from drowning. Could you explain to me what happened to your client on February 7th? 
Yes, my client was in order to New Orleans celebrating Mardi Gras. She was in the hotel and he happened to see the atmosphere. A lot of people wear stoles in the hotel, so if they do, cancel them at security. And what happened next? He went up to the balcony, you're saying? Yes, he went up to the balcony and from there he went to the stand on the railing and he participated in the activities and he exposed himself. Okay, and it's your argument that the downtown or hotel is responsible for his injuries or could have prevented those injuries, correct? Yes, we do believe that. We believe because of the atmosphere that Mardi Gras creates, we believe could have been able to foresee what would have happened up on the balcony. And how could they have, in your opinion, uh, stopped this from happening? We could have provided a protective screen or possibly a guard to prevent such accidents from happening. What does the fuck say? Now the court finds that the question uh, becomes whether the downtowner had a duty to protect plaintiff from his own conduct. The argument is that because of the wild atmosphere of, of Mardi Gras and the fact that traditionally there's so much distractions going on on the uh, balconies, uh, the defendant should have foreseen that an accident was likely and was under an obligation to protect himself. Such a risk is an obvious and reasonable risk of harm, which the defendant had no duty to protect against. Uh, for the foregoing reasons, the judgment of the trial court is affirmed. Da, 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 da. It's the motherfucking Eagle Double G. Snoop Dogg!